Hey there, Travis kiddos. Top of the morning to you. So uh, I'm still wearing my, my leprechauns. I have my light up uh, shamrock. I even have my clover leggings on. I hope you guys are wearing green today too. Uh, celebrating St. Patrick's Day at home. Uh, and uh, we're going to do some science today. So my little animal reporters, let's talk about animals. In our Wonders curriculum, our English language arts reading, we've talked a lot about animals. We've talked about their body parts, how they use their body parts, how they survive or stay alive, and how they use their bodies to help them to stay alive. So we're going to talk about some of that in science today. So a lot of it's going to be review, which is great, and you might have some new ideas to come up with, or you might already know some of this, which is awesome. So uh, I on Twig Science, on Launchpad, you can find the read aloud, which I'm going to read to you here, about animals. How do they survive? Our world has everything animals need to live. Animals, including you and me, are living things. There are some things all animals need to stay alive. That's what surviving means, staying alive. Welcome to the world of animal survival you will discover how animals find what they need to survive in the places they live. Animals need four things to survive, air, water, food, and shelter. If you look at the digital resource, you can see there's a picture of a pinwheel, a kid playing with a pinwheel as the wind is going, her hair's flying everywhere. <laughs> there are two little foxes who are uh, in shelter under a log. There's a beautiful picture of a water uh, droplet and a squirrel eating a nut. Animals get the things they need from the places where they live. At times, that might mean getting things from you. Let's find out more about the basic needs of animals. This is a black bear. Where does the black bear live? Where does the bear get air? What should the bear eat? Where will it find water and shelter? Again, you can read along with me while I do this. Bears breathe air wherever they are, such as the mountains. They find water in lakes and rivers. They eat many different things like fish, berries, roots, and insects. Bears often find shelter in coves or dens. So we've talked a lot about animals and what they eat and what kind of animal that makes them. So we talked about carnivores that eat meat, herbivores that eat plants, and omnivores that eat both plants and meat. So what kind of animal would a bear be? It eats fish, berries, roots, and insects. Which kind of animal is that? It's an omnivore. This is an octopus. How does it get air? What does it eat and drink? Where does it find shelter? The octopus gets water from the ocean. The ocean water also provides the octopus with air. They eat fish, crab, snails, shrimp, scallops, and other sea animals. The octopus shelters in coral rocks and sand. So what kind of animal is an octopus? It's eating fish, crab, snails, shrimp, scallops, and other sea animals. That octopus is a carnivore. It's eating meat, other animals. This is a house cat. How does it get air? What does it eat and drink? Where would a pet cat find shelter? So house cats and other pets breathe the same air you do, right? We're all inside and outside breathing the same air. Cats might drink water from puddles and ponds as well as the water dish that their owner gives them. They eat cat food, which may include different meats and even vegetables. Lucky house cats find shelter in human homes and yards. So if a cat eats meats and vegetables, what kind of animal is a cat? An omnivore like the bear. Now it's your turn. Where do these animals get air? What do they eat? Where do they find water? Where do they find shelter? So in this picture, there's a picture of a raccoon. There's a tortoise, I think, turtle or tortoise. Um, there's a shark and a kid drinking water. So think about um, these animals, us included. Uh, think about how they get their air, what they eat, where they find water, and where they find shelter. So you can find that resource again. So go on to Launchpad, 
you go to Twig Science. We are in module two, Animal Reporters, and the driving quest, it's driving question number one, uh, and it's about animal body parts. So what are animal body parts and how do the animals use these body parts? Um, so you can find the read aloud story there. Um, and then next, before you look at anything else in that section on Launchpad, um, so page 10 uh, in the workbook, which again, I'm sorry, didn't get a chance to send home, but uh, we're going to do some sorting of animals. We've been sorting, uh, we've done sorting in math. We have been working this week on sorting um, different things while we're reading, right? We've talked about the recyclables, how we sort them. In a barn full of hats, they're sorting um, the hats. Uh, in the lost button, they are going to be sorting different buttons that they find, Rob and Toad. Uh, so lots of different ways to sort things. Uh, you're going to sort animals today. So again, I'm sorry you don't have the cards at home, but I'm going to show you a bunch of cards of animals. I'm going to go through them, and I just want you to think about how you could sort them. Okay, no need to do it right away. Look through all the animals first then think about how you could sort them. We have a monkey, a shark, a lizard, a ray, a penguin, a turtle, giraffe, a crocodile, a ladybug, a frog, a human, kid, right? Elephant, pelican, snake, a butterfly, a salmon, type of fish, a whale, a toad, a fly, salamander, flamingo, lion, a blackbird, and a kangaroo. So now, if you want, you can go ahead and rewind a little bit and look through those animals again. Think about how you would sort them into groups. Now, there's more than one answer here, right? Often we have uh, questions and problems with more than one solution. So think about how you could sort them. Maybe you find one way to sort them. Maybe you find two or three. Remember, be clever. Find more than two solutions to the problem. Um, I'm not going to give you ideas because I want you to think about it. I want you to get creative with it. So think about how you would sort the animals, put them into groups. On the workbook page, they only have two columns for groups, so group one, group two. Maybe you have more than two groups, which is fantastic. Um, think about what animals would go in each group and think about why. So what makes uh, that group the same or similar? What do all of the animals in that group have in common? Okay, so you can go ahead and think about that. You can write it down. You can drop pictures if you want uh, or discuss it with someone at home. Uh, and then you're going to think about one more animal on your own. So think up another animal that would go in each group. So whatever groups you made, think about one more animal that would go in each group. And uh, then you're going to go online back to the Twig Science and you're going to find a video um, that is on animal groups. And maybe you want to resort the groups again after you do that. Maybe you already had that idea and you came up with another one watching the video. So um, try to sort them before you watch the video. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. Again, try to think of more than one way. So uh, it's, it's a pretty cute little video. You guys have access to it online. Enjoy it. Um, and enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. Today would also be my class's PE day, so make sure you get extra energy out today. Um, hopefully you guys are getting movement every day. Do some go noodles, go out for a walk or go play outside a little bit, uh, turn on some music and work on your dance moves, anything to get your body moving and keeping healthy uh, while we're all stuck inside. Uh, <laughs> and um, have some, some fun with all of this. Happy St. Patrick's Day again uh, and happy learning.